appreciate you taking time to come watch another uh, Java with John video. And yes, I do have my Java. Simple coffee, cream and a little sweetener, and a uh, simple mug. Because we're talking about the future because of artificial intelligence. And yes, I am one of those people who believe that we are on the verge of watching Skynet be born. But that's, that's a different story right now. I've been reading a lot, listening a lot. Participate in a lot of uh, live activities, webinars on AI and artificial intelligence. Been using it periodically for myself. And, and yes, there are pros and cons. Some things that I've discovered I'm going to share with you. Uh, things that I've heard from experts, people who know what they're doing, and the experts who uh, might be one light bulb short of a full box. But that's a different story as well. So AI can be good. Uh, it you know, what I'm using it for, you get it prompts, prompt for ideas. Um, look for some ways to uh, uh, improve what you're doing kind of thing. So it's good for data analysis. Now, I haven't, I haven't used it for data analysis, but that's what I've heard from some of the real experts and from people I know that, that use data a whole lot more than me. And I use it a lot, but I am not going to make that jump to AI with my my data yet. Uh, it, it helps with, from what I'm told, because again, this is another subject where I haven't seen it yet. It helps with um, routine um, activities. Graphic designers might might see a little bit more of that because of placement of certain things, objects in a graphic. Um, for graphic designers, since I am talking about it, this will help you. Hey, I can help you improve your your image quality, uh, give you suggestions on colors, contrasting tones, font sizes, fonts itself, things like that. Um, gives you access to some expensive design tools too, because I know graphic design work is expensive. It takes a lot of talent as well. A lot of consistency, um, maintaining it. If you're trying to keep uh, the same tone, same voice, for a particular audience, whether it's graphic design or words, you can get in there as well. Um, I use obviously words, being the writer and, and and local celebrity with speeches and everything. I'll use uh, I'll use AI to proofread, but it's not always accurate. I'll get to that part in a minute. Um, one thing that you want to do is when you use AI like like I do, is be specific with what you're asking for. Um, you can set you know, your, your discussion, whether it's, again, copy or graphics. Who is it for? What's your audience? Is it professionals? Is it casual? Is it young adults? Is it senior to citizens? Any, any demographic you can put in your query with artificial intelligence. It'll give you different responses based on what you're asking for. Um, the tone can be the same as well. Your audience might be young professionals, uh, but your tone could be casual, serious, saucy. Uh, it could be delightful, fun, whatever you want to think it to be. Always ask follow-up questions, too. Uh, the easiest one is, how can this be better? What's missing? That can also be something you might use AI for. Put in a paragraph on a, on a particular subject and ask the, the bot to figure out what's What's missing from a point of view or from context you might have been missing in there? Uh, so always ask follow-up questions. And I'm going to let you know right now, don't um, don't be naughty. Adult content, not going to fly because, you know, I, did, I discovered that booby is not just a bird. When I was using AI, I got a uh, warning about their terms of service. So be careful of what you do because you don't want to get kicked off a platform I mentioned something about um, I mentioned about proofreading. Uh, you're going to want to evaluate the credibility and the information that the uh, the AI bot puts out for you. Um, as one of the experts that I talked to uh, said, AI stands for average intelligence. So, because what it's doing is all the bots are looking for the most prevalent, most useful, or I'm sorry, most prevalent most common information. It may not 
necessarily always be the most useful. Uh, I said I used it for spelling and grammar check. It's not always 100% accurate. I proof it, I audio proof it, and I always get somebody to put another set of eyes on my work when possible. So you're going to want to do that too. Um, AI detector has become a thing as well, trying to figure out if a graphic or, or a copy has been generated by AI. Even that's not accurate all the time because I, I did a couple of tests where I took a piece that was 100% AI generated and I took another piece, same word count, that I wrote myself, no help, no nothing, just right from my head and my heart. Put in the AI detector, you had 100% figured out what was the AI. On my copy, it said it was 15% written by a robot. Sorry, I am not an artificial life form. I am 100% human. So, uh, so it even even the detectors aren't there. Again, with the, with the AI, it's it's all mechanical. It's yes, no, on, off, zero, one. A lot of the job seeker websites now are using pushing an AI to write resumes. Your resume is going to look like everybody else's. It's the problem with graphics, word copy, whatever. It's going to look like it's going to look like it was generated by the same artificial intelligence. So be careful when you use that for that. And for since I'm on it, for HR people, don't rely on AI to scan through resumes. Again, it's looking for strict comparisons, grades of expertise on the job description put in. But it'll miss the subtle and soft skills, things associated with something that's not part of the job, such as playing sports or volunteering. That also kind of gives us into a, a little bit of ethics as well with, with bias, because we know that through recent news, we know that artificial intelligence can be biased. So you're going to want to make sure that you give it some human oversight, because that's what's always going to be needed if you manage it you got to monitor it yourself with self-driving cars is an example and yeah that's a version of artificial intelligence you got somebody in the car whether it's in the driver's seat passenger seat whatever there's a human the car's driving gets in an accident who's at fault is it the car is it the human so i mean that's a that's a gray area right there on who's really at fault but that's that's the best example I can think of for that. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you're not violating any copyrights, trademarks, anything like that, that that the AI bot will will generate for you because the last thing you need is a lawsuit for that too. In whatever you whatever you do, if you're using somebody's personal information, whether it's for your business, for your employer, somebody else's information, you gotta you gotta treat it securely, you gotta treat it ethically. I use a lot of database information. I have clients that have their customers, their clients, and I have access to their data. I guard that almost with my life. Uh, I'm not gonna sacrifice myself for bits, but I will press the delete button and hide what I'm doing. So. You have to take some precautions as far as what you're doing with other people's data. There have been talk also that AI is going to take over people's jobs. Some jobs might go away, some might not. Some will get better. Some new jobs might, careers might pop up out of it. One thing that AI can't do, it's the human emotion. Again, it's all logic. Yes, no, on, off. Zero one. It's not going to replace our creativity anytime soon. It's not going to. It's not going to take our motivation, our initiative away. Um, not anytime soon. Now that is not the that is not the Skynet phobic in me. That's actually some of the people who are in charge of designing AI saying that in 10, 15 years, robots, AI will be a whole lot more intuitive. 
those are my takes on it. I hope this helps you out. It's just a guide. Read for yourself. Learn for yourself. There's plenty of online classes for it. Use it. See how it benefits you. See, see what you can come up with. It's a pro and a con for, for all that you're looking for. Because whether you like it or not, it's going to be here. And right now, it doesn't look like a fad. It looks like it's going to get integrated into our lives like social media was 20 years ago. So, Cat Stevens is walking around. I don't know where he is. Thanks for coming out for another edition of Java with John. Finish my cup of coffee. Wishing you a terrific rest of your week and a fabulous year. Mm -hmm.